Good evening, everyone. I am Mark, your fat friend. And I'm James, your black friend. This is the Fat and Black Connection. Where we talk about anything and everything. Well, you know, as long as it's interesting to us, of course. Naturally. And, uh, uh, you know, of interest, uh, we're going we're gonna to start the show on, on a little bit of a down note. Um, but uh, with that being said, we're just going to spend a couple of minutes because we feel that uh, what we're going to talk about is so important to uh, society, to um, to everything, uh, breaking doors, kicking, kicking in doors, frankly. Yeah. yeah. Um, Knocking them down. You know, unfortunately, these are, you know, a couple of moments of sadness and repose. But uh, let's talk about first and foremost, uh, Mr. Bill Russell. Man. Uh, passing away this last week. Uh, the champion of champions. Yes. Uh, 11 time. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, that's player and coach, but still 11 okay. time. 11 championships? Come on. Like, Boston pretty much owes that man everything. Yeah. Um, again, n- not just a great basketball player, but a great humanitarian. Yeah. Uh, a great black leader. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, great, great man. So huge, huge loss. Uh, you know, good representative for uh, old school NBA. And yeah, and just a, just a big loss. Uh, another big loss. Same day. Um, Nichelle Nichols, uh, known to most people around the world as Uhura. Yes. Uh, this this strong black female kicked indoors yo like she was one of the first like she was like a lead on a tv series plus plus i believe i believe that was the very first interracial kiss on tv between her and shatner that is correct sir captain captain kick yeah so uh, another huge loss for the black community you know, another great leader. Um, yeah, just really a trailblazer, so to speak. Yeah, man. Change, so, change. One of the women that changed Hollywood for sure. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> absolutely. And like, like we said, you know, starting off on a, a bit of a sad note, but felt that it was, it was warranted for these yeah. two. I had to show them some love. Got to show Ab- them love. Absolutely. Um, so with that, I think we should toast to them. Oh, and absolutely. I will be drinking El Pato Loco, a Abel Baker Brewing Company based out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh. Um, yeah. Okay. So Abel Baker Brewing Company, really quickly. Uh, this crisp, refreshing lager was designed to help you conquer the desert heat. Brewed with Munich malt to add a touch of sweetness and specialty hops selected to create a light citrus finish. El Pato Loco is one crazy good cerveza. The casinos in our great state famously lack clocks, so time can be ignored. But no matter what time it is there, there's no ducking it. <laughs> you can <laughs> always get loco with us. Responsible, of course. 4.5% alcohol by volume, one pint. Well, I am uh <clears throat> I am drinking a uh moon haze uh from one of my favorite brewing companies, aka Blue Moon. Um, this is a hazy, juicy pale ale. Uh it's uh 5.7 by volume. And this is just a you know uh, a can standard Here's twelve ouncer twelve ouncer, uh, yeah. But it's an ale brewed with dried whole oranges, contains wheat. <laughs> well, uh, here's to Bill and Nichelle. Yes, sir. Hold on, let me let me pour this in here real quick. That is a terrible pour. No, that's a that's a that's a pretty bad pour. No, nah, not as bad as the one you poured yes the last week. Yeah, except mine wasn't coming out of a can. Yeah, that's also true. But, you know, hey, what are you going to do? Anyways. To Bill and Nichelle. Cheers. Live long and prosper. Yes, sir. Ah, All right. So 
We've had we've had a little sip, a little cheers, uh, a little a little downer. Now let's let's uh, let's catch up, right? Because turn it up. Because we are going to have a huge <clears throat> announcement at the end of the episode. Oh yeah, um, you better stick around. We yeah, please stick around. We've got some great news. Uh, uh, one thing, Mark, I think we forgot to tell the people. Mm-hmm. Uh, remember, the show is live and interactive. <laughs> Oh, that's right. So uh, make sure, if you're here, comment section. Make sure wherever you're watching us, Facebook, Twitch, <laughs> Twitter, Daily Motion, wherever you're watching us, YouTube, make sure you leave those comments because sometimes, they, well, not sometimes, a lot of times they make it into the show. And yeah. then sometimes it's even changed the direction of the show. So you yeah. important. We are live. It is August 3rd, 2022 at 8.07 p.m. on the left coast. So, um, yes, sir. Yeah. If you're seeing this, it's real. It's live. Um, and uh, yeah. So, James, it's been a it's been a week. Um, what you been yeah. up to? Well, not a whole lot, man. Just, uh, you know, working, sleeping, getting up and doing it all over again. Um you know, been working on some uh, working on some side projects. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. trying to make that happen, and uh, you know, other than that, just chilling. Yeah, got to get that side hustle on. Yeah. Uh, we recently talked about uh, potentially looking to do something like uh, win a date with the darkness. Have you had any <laughs> had any dates lately? Nah, man, nah, not recently. Okay, okay. we're still working on it. We're working on it though. Okay, fair You're enough. Fair enough. <laughs> well, uh, you know, we opened talking about the loss of some great uh, black superstars, uh, basketball players, coaches, uh, entertainment. Um, let's let's talk about some more great black entertainers, if you will. Yet it will. Um, <laughs> will Smith uh, and Chris Rock both actually this last week finally broke their silence. Uh, on the infamous slap and um yeah so will uh of course coming out with a, an apology video so to speak uh it's not really an apology video so much but kind of uh and chris uh who is doing a show with kevin hart called only headliners um he he kind of talked about the, the slap and i don't know if you heard but when they did this this co- comedy uh show uh at madison square garden recently they oh. actually had dave chappelle as their opening act wait oh, i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry dave chappelle was an opener dave for chappelle, chris rock and kevin hart yes that's, that's right dave chappelle oh, was the wow. opening act <laughs> oh wow Imagine being uh, at that comedy show, bro. That that's probably. I don't even know how much those tickets were. It doesn't matter. Like that is probably that was worth. And Chappelle was not bit. announced. The only uh, thing that was announced. Oh, so it was just those two that were announced, and Chappelle yes. like they were like, "Hey, Dave, come on down and do do a little set for us. Open us up. Yeah, why don't you come on down, Dave? We got a we got a spot for you." Yeah, there's a great photo online of the three of them oh, with uh, Chris Rock having a goat on a leash. Yeah. I, oh, I did hear something about, yeah, he, prese- he got presented with a goat. Uh, he presented Dave Chappelle with a goat. No, no, Dave Chappelle. Or Dave Chappelle presented, presented him. him with a goat. Yes. Yeah, that's great, man. That's great. So, did you, so I believe you saw this uh, It's Been a While video from Will Smith. Yeah. yeah. What would you think? Look, I thought it was good. Um, you know, like basically kind of laying everything out. And, you know, he did express that he was embarrassed and he apologized to not only Chris Rock, but he also said that, you know, Chris wasn't ready to to talk really. So I was like, understandable. Um, but you know, he did say, Whenever you are, I'm ready to I'm ready. Um when uh, he apologized to Chris's family, uh, his mother, his brother, who was definitely upset by the whole thing. And apparently him and Will were cool. So, um, you know, hopefully, and he's like, you know, there's nothing I could say that will really, really mend that. Hopefully we can, you know, be cool again, basically. Um, and then apologize to uh, 
He apologized to Quest Love because, the, of course, that happened right before um, his announce, before he won, um, and apologized to the other nominees, of course. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it was. I mean, yeah, it was kind of a big way to do it, but I mean, I think it's also he wanted to let people, you know, let people know. So I personally, I thought it was I thought it was a good little, you know, good way to kind of put everything out there. And uh, you know, like I said before uh, on previous show when we when this first happened, you know, I really hope that they can get together and work it out and, you know squash whatever i don't know man three plus months later uh to finally come out and apologize i don't know uh, i mean i think it's i i, I mean i think it's how much gotta, of it is genuine versus how much of it is okay i need to get back to work to make some money so i guess i got to do this uh i don't think i don't think he would have done it if it wasn't somewhat genuine because i mean he put I mean, he's already got another. He's already got like a, a, another film coming that he's working on right now, or about to start working on something like that. So, I mean, it's not like you know he's hurting. So it's like I think he just won. I think it was just time to put it out there and and let people you know give you know put himself out there and say you know I want to. I was I was wrong. He, I mean, and he already said he was wrong too before that. But you know, I think this was this was a good way to do it. I think he was actually answering questions. I think it was a video that was answering questions from like uh, fans and stuff too. That's what it seemed like. At least it seemed like he got questions. Uh, he probably got a bunch of questions. He probably got a bunch of the same questions. So he wanted to answer those questions in that video. Yeah, I mean. I'd love to know what our audience thinks, um, you know, whether it's right now, live, interactive, or whether it's, you know, after the fact. I, I really want to know what people out there think about this uh, apology video, if they think yeah. it was genuine, sincere, or if they think it's it's time to get back to making some money. Because, I, I don't know. I mean, there was product placement in this video um, between his hat and his a uh, bottle of water conveniently placed uh, to be able to be seen with the logo. I don't know. I It felt too staged to me. Um, it did not feel genuine enough, frankly. Uh, but, you know, uh, I, I am not uh, God, and therefore I do not get to judge. Um, I'll take it at face value and hope it's genuine. But uh, really, that's for the court of public opinion ultimately long-term true uh switching gears a little bit uh, a huge milestone uh this week um for our friendly neighborhood spider-man it's a uh, thwip, thwip. um and uh celebrating 60 years bro spider-man spider-man like when you think about from just a film perspective, you know, yeah. th there have been eight Spider-Man films, not including animated Spider-Man films, eight live action. Um, yeah, that's right. OK. Yeah. And, and that obviously doesn't include where he's had bit parts in other films like Civil War, or things of that nature. The, inf you know, Infinity yeah. War and blah, blah, blah. Um, but, you know, uh, eight standalone films. Um, yep, and uh, one of the greatest comic book draws of all time. Um, <laughs> yeah, one of the greatest characters, frankly, in all of comic books. Oh yeah, um, you know, I I will always have I think an affinity uh, when I think about comic books for Superman. Uh, he was my first my first comic book love. Um, I but, see. But me, Spider was Man is up there. Yeah, it was X Men for me. Um, so I've pretty much, I've been a Marvel guy for a long time. I don't get me wrong. I, I enjoy, I enjoy DC as well. Uh, you know, comic book wise. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, Spider-Man definitely. I mean, like every, I can remember Saturday mornings, Saturday mornings, getting up and watching, uh, Spider-Man on, on, uh, Fox. 
on uh so that was i used to love that show man that was a great show because it was that x-men um and then you know they if you if you uh had like uh cartoon network when it first started they had like the old school spider-man shows on there so Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so so congratulations spider-man on 60 years 60 years here's to another however many more yeah he'll be around for a long time i i would imagine so i i don't see the marvel machine uh going anywhere anytime (laughs) soon nope uh They they got that disney money now so I want to talk about something that uh, I want to talk about a film coming up in in the near future later. Uh, well, I guess not near future, a little under a year from now. Um, it's a biopic. Oh, yeah. That is being done by Christopher Nolan, who, as far as I'm aware, has never done a biopic before. Uh, nope. But this guy has done some of the most amazing film work. I mean, when you think about he's he's done the the Batman trilogy, right? Yep. Um, you know, uh, Memento. Um, yep. Tenet. Yep. Harry uh, Potter. Uh, I don't think he did any of the Harry Potters. No, he did Harry Potter in this. Uh, was it? Wasn't it? Oh no, that's Chris Columbus. Never mind. Just kidding. Yeah, was, I thought. Was... I think, but I think he. I think Christopher Nolan was involved somehow. I, I swear, I feel like he was, but maybe, anyways, maybe Inception. not. Inception. Oh, Inception, bro. Inception is still like one of the trippiest movies out there. Like, yeah. So for this guy to be doing a biopic, and huge. considering the the who the biopic is about, uh, I'm I'm actually interested in this one. The Godfather or father yeah. of the atomic bomb. Atomic bomb. Yeah, that's. I got. Uh, I, we were looking at this earlier, and I was like, "Yo, yeah." We got our damn Nolan. checking in, saying uh, <laughs> uh, a Chris Nolan uh, Harry Potter would have been amazing. Yes, but. Uh, did not yeah, happen. No, that's yeah. That was that was I was wrong. This Chris Columbus. Um, so there isn't a whole lot out there yet about this film, aside from the fact that it's a biopic, and there's a couple of images, you know, in in this kind of interesting trailer that uh, Universal has put out. It's on like a live loop right now on YouTube, where you can watch it pretty much any time, and it will have it. It updates every loop to show a live countdown until this film comes out. Oh, that's that was because I was like, why is this playing again? I thought, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was so confused. Yeah. And I mean, just look at the, look at who is credited on this image. I mean, yeah. you, you've got the lead playing Oppenheimer, uh, Cillian Murphy, who is probably the least known out of these five, but is still pretty well known. But again, I'm not that name doesn't ring a bell for me. I mean, you would best know him from uh, the original uh, Batman Begins as the Scarecrow. Oh, okay, Yeah. So uh, interesting actor. He's a good character actor. He he. I I haven't seen much with him, but I felt like he did a fantastic job with that. and I think he looks the part. I mean, if you go look at pictures of Oppenheimer and compare them to to him, it's it's interesting. Uh, okay. But also in this film, you've got Emily Blunt, yep. Matt Damon, uh, <laughs> Robert Downey Jr., and Florence Pugh. Hey, do you think Matt Damon will actually get on? Uh, you think Matt Damon will actually get on Jimmy Kimmel this time? Uh, you never know. <laughs> And we've got Steven checking in. Was good, fellas. How you doing, Steven? Good to see you. Yeah, man. And actually, you know, again, this is another film that's shot on IMAX. I think that's going to be a... Is that the new thing right now? Everybody's shooting their stuff on IMAX? I, I wouldn't say it's a new thing. It's, I think, before, there... only people like, um, you know, what's his name that did Titanic and oh, Avatar? Yeah. Cameron. Yeah. You know, Cameron. guys like James Cameron James were the Cameron. only ones that could afford to, like spend the money to do an entire film major well, motion because, picture. Well, because like um, uh, Jordan Peele's new film, Nope, was shot in IMAX. Um, uh, was shot yeah, with I, IMAX. I'm just saying, yeah. now I think it's probably Maybe from it's a financial a more, standpoint. A little bit more um, obtainable. Cost, yeah, cost effective. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, 
I'm, I I really want to see more about this film. I really want to see uh, another, an, a real like legitimate trailer. Yeah. Um, I, I think this one could be a, of interest. So yeah, no, that definitely, you know, Christopher Nolan's involved. I'm, I'm kind of, kind of about that. I like his stuff, man. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, Something dropping uh, now on Disney Plus, uh, our newest edition of Marvel Studios Assembled Ooh, for yeah. for the making of Miss Marvel, uh, which uh, yeah is in my uh, top three Disney Plus Marvel series. Um, that was that was amazing. Yeah amazing so well done and especially on the heels of moon knight that was so amazing and so <laughs> yeah well done. yeah and they just kind of like it was like oh okay i see i see you moon knight and i raise I'm you a, right so what's she hulk gonna do <laughs> yo yo <laughs> she has got a lot to live up to right now seriously um so i haven't watched this yet i plan to watch it uh yeah. you know before the before our next episode for sure um you know, we have we don't generally talk about these a, a lot, but I am very no. much interested in watching this one. Yeah, actually, apparently Lightyear just dropped too. Yes, yes, that is correct. Yeah, and uh, we we did just reference it, so we might as well talk about it. And that is She Hulk, Attorney at Law. <laughs> Can't wait, baby! Only a, like two weeks, and so two weeks from tomorrow, because yeah. just announced today. Uh, she Hulk will not be on Wednesdays. Nope. She Hulk will be on Thursdays. Yep. So they uh, they they teased us because they've been saying the seventeenth all along, and now they're pushing it back a day. <laughs> like, I guess I guess oh, they yeah. realized doing the Star Wars and Marvel thing on the same night was not uh, was not a good thing. Yeah, because you know what's coming for Star Wars. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> but I'm really excited for this show, man. Uh, yeah, Mark Ruffalo. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, uh, seeing him as as uh, Smart Hulk is is awesome. Um, I'm just very excited. Wong is in this, so you know that's that's gonna be dope. Abomination. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just excited to see what they do with this show. Yeah, I uh, yeah. I, I look forward to it. Uh, I like the logo. It feels very almost 80s. It feels very Murphy Brown, too. Or L- L.A. Law. Okay. okay. <laughs> it has one of those, like, old school, uh, one of those old school law, law show feels. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. Um, and uh, I thought now would be a good time to take just a, a brief uh, break uh, just because I, I felt that I, I need to um, go back to a recent episode that we did where we discussed ABBA Voyage. Yeah. And, and we, we did discuss uh, how many hits they had and everything. And then we were discussing Whitney Houston. Yeah. Um, and how, you know, you felt that Whitney Houston was more popular than ABBA. Um, yeah. And I, I, I would still say that ABBA is more popular worldwide than Whitney Houston was worldwide. Okay. In the U.S., Whitney Houston obviously significantly more popular than ABBA. Right. <clears throat> uh, but with that, I, I did want to say I reviewed their... Um, I reviewed Whitney Houston's top 100 hits um, throughout her career, even including uh, posthumously. Um, And so I did want to just take a moment and list the tracks that she has in the top 100 and their place in the top 100. Okay. So I'm, I'm not going to do this slowly because there's quite a few. Uh, Her first entry, Hold Me, at number 46. Okay. And a lot of these that are pretty high on the charts, I'm like, I don't recognize the name. Okay. So, uh, You Give Good Love, number three. Yeah. You saving, Give Good Love. Saving All My Love For You, number one. Oh, yeah. How Will I Know, number one. Okay. Greatest Love Of All, number one. 
Yes. I want to dance with somebody. Number one. Yes. Didn't we almost have it all? Number one. Yes. So emotional. Number one. Uh Where do broken hearts go? Number one. Love will save the day. Number nine. Okay. One moment in time. Number five. Okay. I'm your baby tonight. Number one. Okay. All the man I need. Number one. Okay. Star Spangled Banner. Number 20. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually, that was her Super Bowl. <laughs> that was the one from the Super Bowl. Miracle. Number nine. Okay. My name is not Susan. 20. I don't even know that song. Right? Miracle. I might know that song. Nine. My name, uh, I'm sorry. I already said my name is not Susan. Yeah. Uh, I will always love you. Number one. Number one. Yeah. Had to be. I'm every woman. I was surprised by this. Only number four. Really? Yes. Huh. Uh, I okay. have nothing. Okay. Number four. All right. Run to you. 31. Really? I would thought that'd been higher. But okay. Exhale. Shoop, shoop. Number one. Yes. Had to be. Count on me. Number eight. <laughs> okay. Why does it hurt so bad? 26. Okay. I-, I believe in you and me. Number four. Okay. Step by step. 15. Really? My heart is calling. 77. Oh, okay. When you believe with Mariah Carey. A Carey, yeah. 15. I thought that would be higher. Uh, I'm not surprised because, I mean, it's from a, it's from Prince of Egypt. So, I mean, I can understand why it wouldn't be as high. Heartbreak Hotel, number two. Okay. It's not right, but it's okay. Number four. It's not right, but it's okay. My love is your love. <laughs> Number four. Okay. I learned from the best. 27. Could I have this kiss forever? 52. Same script, different cast. Don't know it. 70. I, it, that's, it's a very interesting song. I, I know it. Yeah. Over a decade later, coming back into the top 100, Star Spangled Banner at number six. Yes. <laughs> Came back. What you looking at? 96. Wow. One of those days, 72. On my own, 84. I look yeah. to you, 70. Okay. Million dollar bill, 100. Higher love, 63. That is, is it. it- Oh, it, that's interesting because they there was a there's like a remix type deal of Higher Love, which I thought would have been higher because I actually really like that one, too. But anyways. so by my count, 11 number one songs. Yep. Now, yep. ABBA in Sweden, which is where they're from, yeah. have more number one hits than Whitney. In Sweden. Yes. And Whitney in the U.S. has 11. Yeah, so, you know, we're good. <laughs> so I did want to take a moment to acknowledge uh, that uh, Whitney had obviously numerous top 100 hits. Uh, yes. It almost takes up an entire page at single space. Yes. Um, I still think, for me, I'd rather go see ABBA Voyage than go see Whitney in Vegas. Uh, well, okay. I'm just saying, I think, I think, agree to disagree. I think the ABBA concert would probably be a whole lot more entertaining. I don't know, but I mean, uh, you know what, though, for you, yes, it might be. For me, probably not. But whereas I would love to see the Whitney Houston show, whereas ABBA's kind of like meh to me. So, okay, okay. Well, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's get back on track, shall we, from that deviation? (laughs) Yep. And uh, let, let's talk about something else that is coming soon that we're both absolutely interested in, uh, except it's not soon enough. We're still over a month away. Ugh. Yo. Andor. Come on, bro. That new you th- trailer is ridiculously good. I like... I don't know, man. Like, so this is... So this whole setup is the prequel to 
Rogue One, correct? Correct. Okay. And Rogue One is probably one of my favorite Star Wars films. Just say it. If you haven't seen Rogue One, get on it. Absolutely. But uh, but I'm just very interested to see, and I'm so glad, so glad they got Forrest Whitaker for Saul Guerrero, uh, Guerrero again. I was like, yes. Yeah, I mean, they kind of they kind of have Had to, to, right? But and, I was just like, and it know. was nice to see Skarsgård uh, doing something. Um, you know, Doctor Selvig from the Marvel Universe. Yep. Uh, haven't haven't seen much of him in a long time. And uh, just to be just to give credit where it's due, James, uh, Stephen is with you. He does agree. He'd rather have Whitney. Yes. Uh, he also says, speaking of Star Wars, I saw a Star Wars burlesque show this past weekend. The Empire Strips Back. <laughs> Highly recommended. Where um, was that? Yeah, I, I can only imagine San Francisco. <sighs> Sounds like it. I think I've heard of, I think I heard they there's a burlesque show that the, that's like Star Wars themed out there. <laughs> uh, they've done they've done like a couple of like the, the Phantom Minute. They've done like all this all the films basically kind of interesting. Um not my cup of tea, but okay. Uh but in regards to Andor, <laughs> I loved the trailer. I am yeah. like I said I I'm super stoked and it's hard because it's still over a month away. I like the I like the first trailer too, and so. And uh, our damn Brian says to Stephen, uh, "You actually went? Wow!" And Stephen confirms it uh, was in San Francisco in China, San Francisco in Chinatown, and it was really good and entertaining. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, so we've got somebody checking in here from Twitch, the legend. <laughs> Why why are we named why are you guys yo, named fat and black? <laughs> yo, why are you guys named fat and black? Well, let's let's uh let's throw let's get let's let's do this for a moment. Let's throw that out of there and let's zoom in on yeah. Do you see this chin? The second yeah. one? Um, yeah. do you see the pigment? So uh yes, uh I'm I'm the fat friend. And, and I'm the uh, black friend, so yes, welcome. indeed. Uh, and we've got drunk three PO checking in as well. Wait, uh, love the YouTube name. Well, thank you, thank you. All right. Uh, and uh, black headphones. Yeah, I got those too. Yes, we both both have <laughs> black both, headphones. Uh, yeah. What what brand are yours? Uh, mine are Sony. I'm I'm rocking the ATH M20X, whatever that is. <laughs> I think the brand's on the head part. Oh, oh, uh, you're right. Audio Technica. Yeah. Good call. Good call. No problem. I saw yes. that when you took them off. So thanks. Yeah. Thanks. So yes, we we are fat and black of the fat Ooh, and black connection. Uh, you yes. can see our little tags down there in the bottom, and uh, yep. So. Uh, Yes, bing, bing, indeed. Uh, Brian, uh, our damn, I've actually worked with one of the Star Wars strip show dancers in local musical theater. Really? Interesting. Very interesting. Indeed. Um, yeah, so kind of kind of cool. Uh, let's let's talk about something, uh, something else that's coming out where I... I Normally, I'm not into these kinds of things, but I do got to say, uh -huh. I, I recently went back and watched the first film in this series with uh -huh. my kid, and I yeah. enjoyed it a whole lot more than I expected. Yeah. Um, and so I'm actually kind of looking forward to this, I got to say. Yeah. Cars on the Road. Um, so we we watched, me and my kid, we watched the first film uh, because we, we, we got her a, a series of books that come with a little device where she can sit down with the book and hit a button that will read the page to her. And so that's pretty cool. Well, <clears throat> she really liked the cars book. And I was like, you want to watch the movie? <gasps> yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so we, we, uh, we sat down, we watched the movie over two days cause you know, about an, uh, just under an hour. And that's, that's more than enough. 
So, uh, so we did it in just, just about two days, but this is, uh, all of the cast is coming back. Well, Ciao. yeah, uh, they're, they're going on a road trip. Mater and, uh, Mater's, Lightning. Mater's sister's getting married. <laughs> That's the best part. Wait, you have a sister? <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So I, I think this will be a lot of fun. It'll be fun, you know, to share with my kid and in that regard. Um, it's a series. Yeah. I, I can honestly say if I had seen this t- two, three weeks ago, I probably wouldn't have been as interested. Um, but having recently watched the first film and likely will be going back to watch two and three. Now. Yo, I will say this much though. Um, that scene that was apparently like the haunted mansion. I was like, okay, I like that in the trailer. I was yes. like, I dig that. I dig that. I like that. Yes. So. Yeah. Um, and of course, uh, we, we do have some, Huge breaking news to share here in the next beep, couple beep, of beep, minutes. Beep, beep, beep. Um, it's stick around. It's it's going to be worth. Oh yeah, going to be worth it'll it. definitely be worth it. Um, so, so oh hey, you, wait back, wait real quick. Sorry, um, back to that Andor thing. That's are they doing a three episode premiere? That's right. It, they're going to do a three episode opener. <laughs> so. An hour and a half, or I see probably what three hours of content. But how many episodes is it supposed to be? Six? I can tell you. Yeah, just- if it's supposed to only six, that's <laughs> you're blowing your load really early. <laughs> yeah, I let's see. According to the fact sheet, uh, there are 12 episodes. Oh, okay, okay. So are they are they an hour ep- are they hour episodes like Mandalorian or are they it does not specify so okay. here's what the fact sheet from Disney says uh, synopsis the Andor series will explore a new perspective from the Star Wars galaxy focusing on Cassian Andor's journey to discover the difference he can make the series brings forward the tale of the burgeoning rebellion against the empire and how people and planets became involved it's an era filled with danger, deception, and intrigue where Cassian will embark on the path that is destined to turn him into a rebel hero. Okay. Yeah. So it's uh, it has three directors. Uh, the, the first director directed the first three episodes plus another three. Toby Haynes. Susan White directed four, five, and six. Benjamin Karen. 7, 11, and 12. That's kind of weird. Hey, are, um, are, uh, Favreau, is Favreau involved? Executive producing? I assume Favreau is involved. Uh, let's and what's see. her name? And then, uh, the, the woman that was on the other shows too. Um, Favreau's remember. probably a consultant. Uh, the executive producers are Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah, Kathleen Kennedy. That's uh, the one. Well, she's the president of Lucasfilm, so. Oh, okay. I didn't realize uh, that. Diego Luna is actually one of the executive producers on the series. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So um, for those of you that don't know, there's a really good website out there. Uh, it's uh, dmedmedia.disney.com. Uh, and, and that's where we go now to get... <laughs> To get all of our lo- get all the logos and look, hey, look, I gotta tell a quick story real quick because the day the day that Mark found that he I don't even remember how he found it, but it was like he was so mad because <laughs> we had been or I said sorry, not we he had been like just scouring trying to find pictures and stuff, and then all of a sudden he was like, "Yo, I'm mad right now," and I was like, "Why?" He's like he pulls up his share screen and he's like, I just found this. And it was like everything that we need for logos, for anything that we need to know about the show coming out, posters, all that kind of stuff, all in one convenient media packet, basically online. So- <laughs> yeah. They call them press kits, but yes. Pre- yeah, um, press kits, yeah. And, you know, <laughs> pulling back the curtain a little bit, um, I do all the work here at Fat and Black Connection. Uh, James just shows up and talks. That's what I said. You did. Not me. 
you. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> not did do still today. Um, yeah. Right. Yes. Uh, and, and Brian, uh, making a very good point. Mando had some short episodes, short as 30 minutes. So it oh, also had right. some long episodes that ran over re- an hour. So. I didn't realize that. Like, I guess because the episodes are just so good. Like, yeah, if you can fit in 30 minutes, go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and for me, uh, I, I will say I've been, and I assume you've been keeping up with the Orville. Oh yeah. Well, series, actually I missed, series, season I missed finale. the last co- Start, oh, then I've yeah, I've missed, today. I've missed a few couple episodes. I know. Okay, I think I've missed like two or two. This is a this is an example of a series that I think they were better when they were on Fox with the limited like forty six minutes. I think them, you know, this last episode went like an hour and ten minutes. Oh, and I feel like it really could have been edited down. Um, yeah. It still was honestly a bad episode. Uh, I really did not oh. enjoy this last week's episode. Um, Yo, I will say the the I, for me so far the best episode has been the one uh, when they lost Gordon and he had to go get him. Oh, and, time, oh. With the time travel. Yeah, that one was. Whew, well, that was and, a good episode. You know, we we do love time travel. Yeah. So there's a there's a reason that we're executive producing a uh, time travel audio drama series. Yeah, true. Um, And uh, again, we've got Brian. Comparatively, Book of Boba Fett had a lot of long episodes. Again, it's true. I will say, yeah, some of those episodes, some of those episodes got kind of like, they were like, okay, are we done? But still, Book of Boba Fett was great, though. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. So we've got this huge announcement that. Huge. Yeah, it's. um, It's pretty big. I mean, it's 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 pretty big. Yeah, for us, it's. I mean, I don't know what it is for the people listening or watching, but for yeah. us, it's a it's a pretty big deal. Pretty big deal. Um, it's it's almost huge. Um, <laughs> what was that? Huge. <laughs> That's great. That was so great. I think I think it's time to. Um, Dive on in to that announcement. What do you think? I don't know. I think it is time. All right. So for those of you watching live with us right now um, or watching watching after the fact, this will be much more aesthetically pleasing than those of you just listening. Um, And and the reason being that what you're seeing right now on the screen is just a yellow blurb. Blurb. Um, Doesn't doesn't really convey much. But uh, with the magic of... the wheel of my mouse, we can roll out a little bit to start exposing a logo. Oh, yes. Uh, that's right, folks. Um, Fat and Black Connection oh, yeah. now belongs to 97 to Now Productions. Yes, sir. This is a new production house. Uh, yep. that that has recently started up. Uh, they uh, are interested in us and our content and uh, picking us up. And uh, sounds like they're going to be uh, getting involved with a lot of things, including Murphy's Inc. Yes. yes. Um, so 97 to Now Productions. Um, so just a, a couple of things to, to share. Uh, this is a company that is looking for fresh talent content. yeah and fresh and, content not not yeah. even young they're just looking for the content <laughs> yeah they they want uh i i so we we're very involved with this and with them and um to the point where they the first major thing that is being produced by 97 to now productions is what is being called 97 to now productions presents a series of short stories. And uh, I would just like to let you guys know the first story was written by one of uh, our writers on Murphy's Inc. and was directed by your yeah boy. Yes. Uh, it, it's it's a very interesting story. So uh, super just, interesting. Just to put it out there, the, the story is called Homesick. Yeah. Uh, written by Austin Dye. 
um, who we had on a recent episode when we interviewed the creative team from Murphy's Inc. Yeah. Um, you such know, a good story. <laughs> yeah, I, such a good I, re- story. I read it and I was, I was amazed. Yeah. Um, so uh, it, it's super interesting in that basically going from Austin submitting his work to be produced to pretty much wrapping principal recording was what Today. a month. Yeah, it was. Like... Uh, so, I mean, this 97 and now productions is cranking, wanting to crank stuff out. So uh, for those of you listening, watching, if you have short stories that you would like to see produced into audio format, if you have uh, friends that have short stories that want to be turned in audio format. Yeah. And, and they're, they're going all out with this. They're, you know, they're, they're bringing in music composers to, uh, you know, each episode will, that they do will kind of have its own theme based on the content of the story. Yep. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's, it's nice to see, uh, people getting to work, you know, what the, the guy that was chosen to kind of be the narrator, if you will, for this first one, um, was actually somebody that we had originally cast in Murphy's Inc. Um, unfortunately some things just didn't end up working out and, and he, he didn't end up doing the show, but he was brought in to do this thing. And, Oh my God. And so you as a, as a director oh. working on this, how was that? Oh my gosh. Like, like I told, I, like I told him, I, this is the first time I've directed an audio, like anything like a audio book type deal. I've done stage directing, so I mean, I kind of had that under my belt, but this was a whole different kind of experience, and he made my job so easy, and he was so wonderful to work with, man. Like, oh my goodness. His voice, his voice is so killer. Yeah, his name's Connor Howard, by the way, and he does have a website, ConnorHowardVO.com. Check him out. Yeah. Please check him out, and he does such a wonderful job on this story uh wonderful dude and um you know and and he took his he's took time to do this to do this and he's getting married soon <laughs> so yeah so yeah so i mean like he's an awesome dude and um great great talent and so i'm so glad that um uh, you know we were able to get him on this project because um because of the whole murphy uh, murphy inc thing so um, but yeah, he is, he's phenomenal. So check him out. And then when this series, when this, uh, first story drops, check that out for sure. Yeah, I, I agree. I think, um, you know, I, I was involved in helping out with this one and, uh, you know, to think it's interesting, right? Because it's a short story. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm expecting total runtime on this, uh, is probably going to be somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes when it gets edited and put together and everything closer to 20 though. Um, but it's, and we're, and it's being done true to like a kind of a book on tape in that there, there aren't going to be sound effects and stuff like that. It's purely going to be done through one storyteller reading the story, and using their voice to tell the story. Yeah. Um, and, oh, man. He, oh, he was uh, he, just great. Just great. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think it was probably about nine hours of recording time that yeah. would get pared down to about 20 minutes. Yeah. It's it's always funny, you know, when I think about working on Secrets of Heritage House and working on Murphy's Inc., um, when when you see the amount of time that goes into these recording <laughs> sessions and the amount of recording sessions and then yeah. what you ultimately get you know you record 20 hours of content for you know maybe 3 or 4 hours of content right it's but that's the same thing with film it oh excuse me um it's basically the same thing with film because you know you you could do you know we shot uh, for example, uh, when I was when I was doing Rent in Oakland, when they were doing the film version and they shot in Oakland, um, we shot for what three 
three or four days for like a 15 minute scene, if -hmm. that. And I think it's even shorter than that. Mm -hmm. But it's like, (laughs) that's a lot of time because, you know, you got to get, you know, you're getting different angles and you're getting different shots. You're doing this, that and the other thing. So, so it's it. That's why it takes so long. And then you just you got to trust your editors and, um, you know hope they give you the great stuff so yeah so very similar experience from just an audio standpoint right yeah i mean you you had multiple takes with the actor you you go and do some pickups on specific sections and then you you pare it down and that's and that's what i've been doing for that's that's what that's what i've been working on that's the side job that i've been that's the side project that i've been working on so Yes, it's it's nice to know that you can put in some work there, except, you know, the show that you've been doing with me for well over a year. <laughs> well, the thing was, is that this was I didn't have. I, well, I did have a choice, but I was like, you know what? I want to make sure I get the good stuff. So I, when I hand it over to the editor that uh, we we will have uh, as good of a product as we can. And I think you do a great job getting the stuff together for this show. So, you know. That's why. That's if why it ain't I, broke, why fix it? That's your cop out, huh? <laughs> All right. All right. Well, uh, yes. So, folks, ninety seven email productions. Um, super excited to work with them. Um, super excited to see what they bring to the future. And uh, again, for those of you interested, if you from any creative standpoint, it doesn't have to just be short stories. Right. If you've got a pitch for. Uh, music for print for artwork for uh, it's these guys just it seems like they really want to help creative type people <clears throat> get their content out yeah yeah if you have if you have anything if you have anything please bring it to us you know actually you know what I want to throw out um, if you one of our one of our listeners um, who actually created our one of our first logos um, which were the uh, the clone monkeys uh, the <laughs> from uh, our good friend Mike Leon. Um, you know, check him out on Instagram. Uh, what was it I clone art or something like that? Like, so he has NFTs. So <laughs> check him out. So he's one of the he was one of the guys that uh, first helped us out. So make sure I throw him some love again. It's been yeah, a while. Absolutely. Um, that's always an important thing to do. And just as a, as a reminder to those who, um, you know, um, oh, what the heck? I'm trying to actually bring that image up uh, so that we can call back to the good old days when, when our temporary logo was that. Yeah, man. That, <laughs> that was a good one, man. I literally, I hit him up and was like, "Hey, can you help us make a logo?" And this is what he gave us. And it was, it was great for the, it was a good placeholder, man. Yeah, was, absolutely. And we still have it on the page, so you can go check that out for sure. Yeah, I still have it tagged at the very top of, of yeah, the, the page. All day, so it's it's a great. I, I I will always remember that picture. That was great. That was a great start. Yeah. So, uh, James, anything else on 97 to now to share with the audience? No, man. I think it's just, um, you know, they are, they are, they're working. They're working hard. They're going to try and uh, bring, bring a good, good amount of stuff out there. So definitely like, like Mark said, if, if you know people who have music, who, who are involved in music, who are, are involved in writing, who are involved in art, Whatever they're involved in, get in contact with, you know, this company and, you know, they'll definitely see what they can do for you. Yeah, they're they're very much in their infancy. Uh, I know that the website <laughs> is coming soon. Super. Like, that's not even super infancy. Yeah. <laughs> like newborn. Newborns. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, newborns, but yet they've already finished principal recording on <laughs> two different projects. Yeah, <laughs> and working and working on a second season for one for for one said project. Yeah. So, um, 
super excited about that to be involved with that um to be able to share that announcement yeah uh, yeah so uh james you got yes, you got anything else going on anything good or uh interesting you want to talk about or share with the audience not really man i i'm just um i'm just really glad i'm you know just today has been just a f- very kind of fulfilling day because we did we finished up that um we finished up our principal for um for the first for our for the first short story um and it's our it's sounding great so uh i'm putting i'm just got to get the last uh our today's our today recordings um picked out and put together and then we'll be good so yeah nice noise yeah hey your face looks weird though by the way that's just you know <laughs> you shaved everything yeah well okay Very is your quick. face cold <laughs> it is um so it uh, i'll just put it out there so recently uh my kid decided that she didn't like my facial hair um like she <laughs> so she didn't she didn't want to like get close to my face so she didn't like to you know get hugs or and i don't know why it's not like anything changed i've as long as she has been alive i've always yeah. had facial hair right um there was one point where or you know pretty much yeah i i've always had it because you know i i had the big beard and then i trimmed right. that down but i've always had something yeah um but she said she wanted to go on and i hemmed and hawed because i really i hate i hate i hate this um it just it does not it does not feel right um the last time that i was completely clean shaven was probably um i want to say 2013 sheesh and that was only because i had done les miserables um and had grown out a big old beard for that show and you wanted to get rid of it yeah, and so I was like, "Well, if I'm going to do it. Let's just go all go big or go home, right?" So, right. I think that was the last time I went completely clean shaven, and okay. I I hated it and started growing it back right away. Um, yeah, the, the last. The, I mean, I mean, I've had facial hair. I only shave anytime I shave all my facial hair off. It's like most of the time, it's either I just want to start over again or I made a mistake. There's been a couple times I made mistakes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you were clean shaven recently. Yeah, I was because that's because I was just like I I want it gone because it was just kind of it was all weird. So I was like, yeah, just start over again. So today, my kid tells me that she wants it back, and I'm like, <laughs> what? O- okay, but it's going to take time, and she doesn't understand that it's it doesn't just happen. It doesn't overnight. Grow, yeah, yeah, it's not a Sims game. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Tyrus? Finally, Finally work. Finally Man. checking in. Man. Kind of late today. Missed out on all the, <laughs> missed on, on out on all the good content, especially the huge announcement. <laughs> well, he can go back and watch it. Yeah, sure I don't think will. he does though. I don't, oh, does he? I don't uh, know. Whatever. It's all good. Well, Tyrus, you need to go back earlier in this episode. We we had a huge announcement, so go back and watch that. Watch that. Uh, but yeah, so that is why I'm clean shaven, and I am will now be growing back. <laughs> Ah, children are so fickle. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed they are. I don't I don't like it. Wait. I miss it. Grow it back. It's like those videos when like the the dads have have the, the beards and then like all of a sudden they like they'll like shave it off and reveal it to their kid and they're like kids like, wait, who are you? Like <laughs> that was a different for you. She was like, nah, get that gone. Yeah. <laughs> wait, no, no, bring that back. Well, yeah, and my my wife hates this too. She she much oh. prefers me to have facial hair. Oh, so, all right. yeah. All right. So that's that'll be coming back. That's cool. It just takes time. Well, uh, with that, I think uh, I think it's a we good time it. to I think it's a good time to shut it down. What do you think? Yeah, cut it. 
<laughs> all right. Well, uh, thank you all for joining us. We hope you yes. enjoyed today and hope you enjoyed our special announcement. Um, oh, yeah. I'm not going to say anything more on that to make Tyrus have to go back and listen to it. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm glad you watch what you at uh, what you watch afterwards. So that's good. That's good. What you missed, indeed. Uh, well, with that, I'm gonna say, uh, have a good evening. Hey, you do the same. I will do the same. Y'all do the same. Hey, hey, and... don't tell me what to do. All right. Well, hey, we'll see y'all next week. How about that? <laughs> How about that? Cash me outside. <laughs> Cash me outside. How about that? <laughs> so stupid. It was real. It was fun, but now it is no longer real fun. <laughs> uh, yeah. Bye bye.